Stay tuned, I'm going to show you some of the Gig Master secrets to making videos on YouTube. Stay tuned. Alright, a couple of my subscribers asked me to explain how I make YouTube videos. So, I'm going to go over a couple of things here in this video. Uh, one, we're going to talk about cameras, different cameras you could use. on, And the one specific camera that I use and we're going to talk a little bit about lighting and sound when you're using the camera. It's very critical. Um, we're going to talk about types of camera holders, how you hold the camera, what, what depending on the scene that you're doing, you know, whether you're going to mount on your chest, your head, tripod, whatever. We're going to talk about different camera holders. Uh, we're going to talk about the software used to, um, to make the video and also upload the video to YouTube. So let's first start off talking about the cameras. Now, this is a camera that I use right here. It's an XP series, a Fuji, made by Fuji. They come XP 120, 130, 140, and so forth. Uh, but this is my main camera that I use. And you might ask, why do you use that camera? I, as y'all know on my YouTube, um, I'm either underwater, I'm in mud, I'm in clay, I'm in sand. I'm in all kinds of environments. And I got grit and dirt going all over this thing. So I need a camera that's going to handle that. It's got to be waterproof. It's got to be uh, durable. And this camera does a good job. And not really expensive because, you, you know, if you want to buy a couple of them, you know, you don't want to spend a fortune, you know, you're not making money yet. So you, you don't want to spend a lot. So this camera is uh, it's probably like $150 at Costco. Uh, I bought two of them on Marketplace recently, on Facebook Marketplace, for $80, two of them. So, I mean, you can get them pretty inexpensive. And they do a pretty good job. There are a lot of cameras out there that do a lot better job. Um, a lot of people um, like the GoPros. Um, I'm not sure about the GoPros. I, I like, I'm like i zooming in and out all the time on my camera on the beach and all looking at stuff. They say you can't do that with the GoPros. I've never used one, so I'm not sure about those. Um, the one issue, uh, every camera is different. Uh, this particular one is easy to set up. It's got uh, a function on here. You go to set up and called SR, Scene Recognition. I just put on Scene Recognition. It automatically uh, recognizes whether, whether I'm in low light, a portrait, a landscape photo, what I need. It kind of recognize it and adjust the camera will adjust itself so i don't have to sit there and adjust it every time so i like that feature but one thing about cameras you got to be uh, very concerned with is sound i'm out in the outdoors all the time with wind blowing and, and different things and you really got to watch that because if you got a wind and you're trying to take a video it complete can ruin your entire video and what i found out with this particular camera is you got to cover this right here there's a little tiny speaker a microphone rather right here the microphone is right there a little tiny thing so i knew i had to put some foam over top of this and you could actually probably uh glue a piece or velcro a piece over there but what i did i got this microphone foam right here and what i do i just slide on top of it like that pull it over and it's covering the, the microphone right there it works great i, I had it i've done a couple videos for tests with it on and off and it's unbelievable the difference it is when you put a foam over top the microphone. Unbelievable. Uh, let's talk about lighting just for a second. Yeah, outdoors, you gotta be careful about shadows. Um, Cause the, the, um, if you got a bright spot in the background you, you, and you got a shadow in your face, it can darken you completely out. Even like in, a, in an open field sometime I've noticed, you know, if I got um, a, a bright spot behind me, I'm taking my video, it'll, it'll, it'll make you get real dark looking. There are software that can brighten it up, but be careful about lighting. Uh, you want the sun to face you so you got nice exposure with the sun. When you don't, don't put a shadow on you when you're holding it. Uh, make sure you got nice nice color in there and, and uh, no building shadows when you're try to get bright. Uh, if it's cloudy day, you, you're probably good anywhere. When a cloudy day is one of the best filming days because you don't have all the shadows and the highlight, low light, the background also. Uh, if you're doing a, a nice sky scene, you, know, you want the sky in the background, blue, uh, 45 degrees to the sun. The sun in the front, 45 degrees, makes that blue sky, just blue, blue sky. So that's another little trick feature when you're, when you're taking this video. Um, but anyway, that's that's the camera I use. There's thousands of cameras that you could potentially use. And I'm not saying any one is better than the other. Uh, we're not doing a, a camera review on this video. But uh, just get one you're used to. You learn how to operate. Uh, the main thing is learning how it works, how to operate, and what it does. You know, just like anything you're using, just just learn it. Metal detecting, you, you learn. You know, one sometimes one's not better than another. You just gotta learn how to use one. So anyway, 
that's my little trick on the cameras I use right there. Uh, one other thing, this camera's not the best on, on batteries, so I always keep two spare batteries actually in my left pocket so I'm ready to go in case one of them dies out. You always want to be prepared in case you get a, a low battery because uh, this one does, will run out of battery price. Always keep a spare on hand, keep a couple charged. Okay, <clears throat> next thing we'll talk about is camera holders. Uh, one of the main ones I use is this right here, and it's a chest mount. Let's see if I, hopefully y'all can see this. But it mounts around my chest, you put your arm through here, and you just pull it around, and it locks right here, just like that. And as you see, the camera uh, chest mount right there, and you can actually take the camera. I got these quick dis this quick disconnects, and I'll show you those in just a minute here. But uh, they work really well for me, because you can go pop them in like that, and they're, and they're good to go. One thing we'll make sure is this is good and tight. If you move around, see, see how this thing's bouncing up and down on my chest? These got these little straps and you want to pull these straps nice and tight so that the camera is not bouncing around on you and it's good and tight. Make sure it's, as you see now, it's not moving. It's not moving now. It's staying, staying steady. So that's good. So that's what I use most of the time is my chest mount. Because you, you usually don't have, you know, unless you got somebody taking your picture, which is fine. But most time, a lot of time, by myself, or I'm, everybody's out doing their own thing. So I got to, um, you know, make sure I can handle it myself. Um, I, I haven't used them like once or twice. This is actually a head mount. You can actually mount this right on your head, right here, like that. Pop the camera right in there. But it is a little bit. It will move a little bit. And I don't usually use this very, very. I've only used it a couple times there. So. That is not one I want to use right there normally. Um, I always keep a backup. I always keep a backup right there. Um, uh, other ways you hold the camera, you, you got these right here. These are like little uh, little tripods that you can put on the ground. And I will use these sometimes like on the beach if I want to do the waves or something. I'll just set up and set it right there. And uh, I got a few of these. And I will put uh, some links to some of this stuff on you on my uh Video description on this video, you'll have links. Now, um, GoPros have a lot of different mounts they use. All these are GoPro mounts, actually. I'm going to show you how to convert a GoPro mount into a standard camera mount right now. Okay, what we got here, this is normally the mount that you'll see for GoPros right here. What you do is you buy this right here, and I have a link on my description. And what it does, it converts this GoPro mount to a standard camera mount like that right there. The GoPro will uh, you just go ahead and you tighten this up right here. And that is the mount right there. Then you can take a camera right here and you screw it right on right here. And then you got your regular, this is uh, like that, and you're good to go right there. Now, um, what I use, y'all see me popping these in and out here with these quick disconnects right here. I use those right there that call quick disconnect. So, because a lot of times I'm taking my camera off, taking a picture on the beach, pop it back on my chest and all. I don't want to have to sit and screw it on and off. And that's what I was doing at one time. But if you screw it on enough, it'll, it'll strip it out. And I have had to re tap these in here to get them to work again. So, I don't have to do that now. Though. I fixed that problem with these quick disconnects. I don't have to take it on and off, on and off, on and off. So, I'm going to show you how to do that right now. You saw me just put that on that. Uh, Right there, this is the, the GoPro mount. Next thing I'll do is screw this mount right here on here like that. And then I'll take this. This was already on here. So uh, let's see if we can find one here. One right here. This one's not on there. So what you do this one, you just screw it onto the bottom of the camera like that. And then you can just pop it on like that. Then it's good to go. So now it's easy to take it on and off anytime you want to take it on and off. It's uh, much easier than having to screw it on and off every time. So anyway, this was actually when I put on my boat. This is another camera mount that you can put on a railing like that and just put the camera on top of it. I did this on my boat when I was taking video going down the river. I had it mounted right there. So all kind of different kind of mounts. Um, you got these right here that you can just clamp on the side of a thing and hook it up. And it'll take a, you know, mount your camera mount right on that. A lot of different ways to do videos. This is good for like if you're panning for gold, you can stick it around in your pan, put it down in there, and you swirl for gold, and this will stay the same speed and everything as you're panning for the gold, which is pretty cool. Well, that's pretty much covers the mounts, the cameras, what you need to get started with that. I like to do quick disconnects, but you don't have to have those. Um, 
So let's talk a little bit about software. All right, I didn't say one more camera mount, of course, is the old tripod. Everybody knows about that one. And I do use that one sometimes, depending on what I'm doing. Uh, software. I particularly use uh, Apple computers. So I use one called Final Cut Pro. Uh, it's not very hard to get to learn. It takes a little bit of time to learn any of them. But a lot of cameras now have built-in uh, video software. Uh, iMovie, I think, on the, on the iPhone. And uh, Android, I'm not sure, but I know a friend of mine was putting all his videos out on YouTube using his Android phone. So it's not hard to get to use that. Um, you want to use HD if you can, uh, 1080, 1080p. But um, <clears throat> when you go to uh, upload, you make sure your settings are set to upload in that uh, high definition. I did make a few mistakes on mine. Even recently, somehow it got changed in my settings and I was uploading on a, um, 380 and 460. You know, when you go to upload, you click video, uh, you got your video on, on your screen there, and you have upload to YouTube. Once you click it, you got a settings menu. You got to make sure it's either uh, on the proper upload uh, format as far as high definition. So, you get it uploaded. Uh, we're not going to go into how you go through all that on this video. You may want another one uh, as far as going to, uh, when you upload YouTube, there's a lot of different uh, settings you got to change on YouTube to uh, upload it, make it uh, when it's going to come out and all kinds of stuff. We'll get into that. But anyway, that covers a lot of uh, what I do. And there's a lot of ways to do it. It's not just one way. So, you know, if you got other mounts or something that you uh, think I might be able to use, put it down in the comments down below. I'm always open for suggestions all the time. Uh, I try to keep good lighting. I got a little circle light here. I got another light over here. Lights up top. Trying to keep good lighting here. If you're doing lighting inside, um, I've had to adjust. I probably need to adjust a little more, uh, you know, to get that nice white lighting instead of a, like a yellowish light. So anyway, lighting and sound are two important features of doing a video for sure to make them quality video. All right. Well, I think that's what we covered. Uh, I appreciate everybody coming along with this video. I hope that answers some of the questions some of my subscribers had asked me about it. So I just wanted to kind of go through it right here. And like I said, I'll try to put links to some of the stuff that I use down in the video description. I'll have some links down there for some of these products right here that I use. All right, appreciate everybody coming along. Don't forget to click like, comment below, share, and subscribe to the Gig Master. You never know what we'll be doing next. Stay tuned. All right, I want to show you one more trick I use. Uh, what you see here in this picture is a one of my camera lenses that looks like it's got scratches all over it, but it's not. That's actually scratches on a film that the manufacturers put on top of lens for a light reflection. And you can actually take that off and clean it up. That's not um, in the glass itself. I'm going to show you another picture right next. Same camera. Check this out right here. Look at that. Not a single scratch on it. it was, the, the glass was not scratched at all. And how I took that off is using some uh, turtle wax squirrel uh, remover and... Um, and then I use um, a little buffing wheel. And I got a whole video of that. And I'll put a link to that video right here if you want to check it out.